Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'll be going over the maximum subarray problem. And in this problem, you're given an array of nums and you're supposed to find the continuous subarray which has the largest sum and return that sum. Now, of course, you can use the brute force method to find the largest sum. And the brute force method would just be to look at every single possible subarray there is and calculate the sum through there and then return the largest sum. However, this gives you a runtime complexity of n to the power of 2 and is very inefficient. So what you want to be doing instead is using a dynamic programming algorithm called Cadane's algorithm. So in Cadane's algorithm, each subarray you're inspecting would essentially be similar to a sliding window. So you would first start with just negative 2 as the subarray you're inspecting and then you have a current sum, so the current sum of this subarray would just be negative 2, and you have a global sum. And that global sum right now is also negative 2 because that's the only sum that we currently have. And now we look to expand our subarray, and essentially we're going to take the greater of two numbers, either the current sum plus 1 or just 1 itself. So the current sum plus 1 would be negative 1 or just one. So and since one is greater than negative one, the subarray we're inspecting just becomes the one. And our current sum would become one, and the global sum would also become one. The global sum becomes one because one is greater than negative two. So now we get on to negative three, and we check to see if current sum plus negative three is greater than ne just negative three. So in which case it is, so our current sum would now be negative two and the window, the subarray we're inspecting becomes one and negative three. Now we check to see if our global sum updates and in this case it does not because negative two is less than one. So now we get to 4, and we check to see if adding 4 to the current sum is greater than just 4, and in which case it's not. So our current subarray just becomes 4, and our current sum becomes 4, as well as our global sum. And we continue on with this algorithm until we reach the end of the array, and then we return global sum. So if you guys didn't get it the first time, I'm going to go through the code as well as the algorithm once more. And essentially, we start here and we have current sum and global sum equal to the first index. So current sum is equal to negative 2. Global sum is also equal to negative 2. And we're inspecting just this negative 2 as a subarray. So for our next iteration, we are inspecting this 1 and we check to see if adding this 1 to the current sum is greater than just the 1 itself. And in which case it's not. So our subarray is just this 1. And then update our current sum and global sum. Now we get to negative three, and then our subarray increases in size, and our current sum becomes negative two. We get to four, and subarray just becomes four, and we update current sum and global sum. We get to negative one, and we check to see if negative one plus the current sum is equal, is greater than just negative one itself, and it is, so then we would increase the subarray, and the current sum becomes three, and our global sum doesn't change. Now we get to two, and then our subarray will expand. So now the current sum is five, and our global sum is also five, and now we, we get to one, and it's gonna expand again, and our current sum is going to increase as well as our global sum. And now we get to negative 5. And the array we're inspecting right now would be this. And our current sum for that would be 1. And then now we would expand it even more. We include this last element, which is 4. So our current sum becomes 5, but our global sum doesn't change. So then we would re return our global sum, which is 6, and that's our answer. So what you'll notice is the most important part of this algorithm is this line of code right here. 
where we're calculating the current sum. So this current sum line right here is going to determine whether we are inspecting just the element that we're on or we expand the subarray, right? So we either take the current sum plus the current index value or we just take the index value. And that's really what dynamic programming is all about because we can just keep adding to this current sum if our subarray increases in size. Another thing to note is the current sum is basically just the sum of the current subarray that you're inspecting. And let me just go over the time complexity of this algorithm real quick. So the runtime complexity is O of n because you just loop through it once and the space complexity is constant O of 1. And if this video helped you out, then be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.